Um, hi, I'm Bethan. Um, this is a photo I took in Canada um, on a uh, like a wildlife fishing boat. Um, that's the yellow boat. <laughs> and um, for me, this picture is about how we interact with other parts of the natural world. And um, obviously there's like a human presence, but then obviously lots of other species present as well. Um, it was in quite a, um, like a fairly uninhabited part of British Columbia. So lots of trees and like a big focus on the animals and the cultural importance of those animals to um, kind of Canadians, both like European Canadians and indigenous Canadians. Um, my research isn't directly on environmental justice, it's on kind of um, how heritage interacts with climate change, um, but that like has a crossover patch. Um, so I spend a lot of time at the moment thinking about like how we imagine us to be separate from nature or together with nature. Um, and this boat trip was just an experience when um, I found myself thinking in two different ways. Um, I found myself thinking about kind of all the animals I was seeing, like I was ticking them off a list, like, like a collector kind of um, idea. Um, and then I also experienced it as a very uh, kind of connected environment where the wind, the sky, the sea, the animals, myself, my friends were all like part of one thing together. So I felt these two different kind of cultural um, interpretations of nature happening at the same time. It made me think about how that affects, um, you know, what we think about uh, climate change or how we make decisions about what to do with the environment or the kind of work or activities that take place somewhere um, are obviously going to be affected by um, whether we see ourselves as part of this system or as observers. So here, um, this photo I took from the University of Darissa, and uh, why I took this is because of uh, seeing the importance on why we need to conserve our environment. As you can see, that's just a, uh, a bush, a small bush. But why is that important uh, as a part of, uh, of, uh, of an ecosystem? It's because of uh, its importance in terms of uh, sustaining the life of uh, other living organisms including human beings as well because you see it's a green vegetation it has trees which help to maintain uh gases uh, this uh, it helped to to maintain uh, or to balance the harmful gases on the air but also it acts as an habitat for other insects and other small species that we might think of uh, so why is that important? It's because of uh, the fact that we are all depending on nature. And this one is not the distracted environment. It still has its purity. So I was, uh, my intention was to emphasize on how we can uh, uh, be able to get our income or to generate income to do whatever, economic activities, to get what you want from nature, but sustainably without uh, somehow disturbing or uh, uh, making serious harmful to the environment to the extent that we can no longer get our necessities from the environment. So uh, following the importance that we are all depending on nature and our survival is basically nature and we're intimately connected to nature, uh, I, 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 I advanced this photo post on patterns so that uh, everyone can see the importance of uh, keeping or conserving the environment that we still have. Some of the virgin bushes, virgin forests, water bodies, how we must conserve them so that um, our later, our future generations can also meet their, uh, uh, their necessities uh, from nature. So this photo is among of uh, very important photo because you see there has been a lot of distractions along the world because of the advancements that we have attained uh, worldwide. I'm not uh, talking of the north or the global south, but just every part of the world. 
but um, there is this sense to which we must think of involvement as something very crucial than we might think sometime. Because you see, uh, we, are all, we are all intimately connected to nature, but this the adverse effects or our actions that we do on nature have the tangible consequences that sometimes are not evenly distributed. But we don't have, we are not here to blame ourselves or to blame others why they have created uh, air pollution, why they have uh, made the uh, very harmful or they have uh, degraded our environment. But because uh, we are all depending on nature, we have uh, that duty of making sure that we maintain or we watch on one another to make sure that we continue to sustain our environment uh, for we to make uh, sure that we continue to, to sustain on this earth and enjoy the life. Earth is the environment where we can now live, we can learn, we can, we can live, we can learn, we can work also. So we depend so much on, on nature. So let's uh, not start pointing one another of who started to uh, uh, induce this harmful effects. But let's now start taking actions of how we can restore our degraded environment and maybe take care of how are we not likely uh, to degrade our environment as we are now see the consequences of environmental injustice that some people are being disproportionately uh, uh, distributed these uh, effects of, of the environment. So if we need to make a world a, bit, a better place for each and everyone, we have to just uh, start taking, uh, started taking um, actions by began with ourselves, me and you. Uh, so we can't wait until leaders or other peoples to come and act for us. But since we are uh, taking environment as part of us and we are part of the environment and we depend or we are intimately connected, then we don't have to wait but to take action just now. Sure tells us the impact of climate change on food security. That area is a farm. It uh, was taken in Dodoma in Mpwapa district. There is a village which is having a river known as Rumoma. Uh, last time, it had a lot of water, and the people there used it to grow crops three times a year. But uh, nowadays, it's not like that. Because of the impacts of climate change, they don't have enough rainfall. So the source of water dry, the amount of water uh, does not flow as it used to flow before. So there is a shortage of water. And they depend on that water to do irrigation uh, during uh, summer to go different crops. But the situation nowadays is not like that. So people suffer. They don't have enough food. They depend uh, food from outside the region. But during that time, they used it to feed other regions. Papua district and even in the Doma seats. But nowadays, they buy food outside because they don't get enough food in that region because of what. So as we are saying, uh, we are not, we developing countries, we, we are not responsible for that. We did not cause climate change. Uh, this climate change, is because of the industrialized countries. They are the one who caused uh, uh, climate change, but it, it affects also us because of those impacts. The impacts goes everywhere in the way. So poor people like those people live in that village, they are affected because they don't get enough food as they used it to get during the previous time. So what it has to be done is climate change adaptation. 
And because they are poor, they cannot adapt. So they, that, that's why they face, they face uh, food shortage uh, because they can't uh, drill uh, water so that they can do irrigation. As a result, they, uh, they have to buy, yeah? they have to go somewhere outside their village to buy food, which is very expensive. So it is very important to know how uh, these people can be supported in order to adapt with the, uh, the impacts of climate change. And the developed countries have to pay, to pay the role. They have to pay this role of helping these people, poor people, so that they can adapt with the, those impacts. Otherwise, they would find other ways, other ways of finding money so that they can buy food. And other ways, they may be uh, very bad for the environment. Uh, they, can, uh, they can do what they can. They can destroy forests uh, to make charcoal so that they can sell and get money to buy food. But the side of environment is not good because mm -hmm. if you cut trees, you cause also uh, the problem of, uh, of climate change because there will be no more trees because the trees also play the role to, to make rain. So the problem will be bigger and bigger if these people will not be supported by, uh, by uh, outside outside people. And these outside people are not else but the developed countries, which are the ones most climate. So that is all about that thought. Can you can you see the image? Great. So this um this is me um in mountain hiking in the Lake District, which is a mountainous area in uh, north in the north of England and you can see on my back is my son Torin um, he's sleeping <laughs> he's sleeping in this picture um, but I carried him all the way up all the way up the mountains and um, and I wanted to share this because I recently became a mother and I, me and my husband have been talking a lot about our concerns about climate change and their impact on Torin, our son. And it was interesting hearing uh, Victor talking about future generations because it's on my mind as well, a lot. Um, and the reason I wanted to show this image was because it's important for us, for Torin to learn and enjoy being outside and being in um in the in the open environment and to understand and have a real affiliation and connection with nature so this is something that we feel is really important to instill in him very young so having a curiosity about the outside world and the environments and creatures that we share the world with. And hopefully this will give him a really good uh, bed of knowledge and love of the environment so that he, he understands how important it is to us. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, that's mm -hmm. my, those, these are ongoing conversations that, that me and my husband have a lot. 